Federal government has announced plans to ensure the return of toll gates on federal highways. And an ultimatum has been given to the federal government by the labor union to implement the new minimum wage. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewiki. Federal government has announced plans to return toll gates to federal highways abolished in 2003 by the administration of ex-president Olusegun Obasanjo. This was stated by the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatu De Fashola. Are Nigerians not already overburdened with increased VAT and harsh economic environment? Joining me to discuss this is Shegu Chopiton. Uh, he is with the AT Network and also a political analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. This was off our ways 18, <laughs> almost 18 years ago. 16. Yes, and we were fine with that. Now we're here. Plans have been concluded. It's not even up for debate. What is your reaction? Um... I, I mean, my first reaction is, like you say, that, that um, you know, a bit of concern that um, the minister and the government didn't think it was necessary to um, sort of carry the country along with such an impactful decision. You know? So to them, it might not mean much, but if you are a transporter, for instance, that plies the Lagos Ibadan, let's just use that as an example. Um, four or five times a day, um, you know, in the course of your business, this is significant. Um, and of course, the multiplier effect of, of that across the value chain is also crucial. So, um, bearing that in mind, one would have thought that the government would have done a bit more in sensitizing the public, preparing our minds, and all that before they just drop the bombshell that you know yeah, targets it, it, are just it looks come like back. the conversation has been uh, in the works for a while yeah. going by the statement by mm. Fashola um, he also said that although it was a policy of government at some point to mm. remove toll gates there is no law stopping them from you know creating toll gates and it's going to be over the th the old points where these yeah. toll gates were before 38. is that reason enough for them to decide to bring back toll gates I because mean, they can yeah. is that reason enough <laughs> you know um mr fashola is a lawyer so he would always think within the perspective and the point of view of what the law permits and what it doesn't but this is for me it's not even a legal issue at all i mean um so let's grant and i'm not even accepting that i'm not a lawyer but i seem to understand that there are some laws that um, require this to be taken to the assembly before it can be done um, but I, I can't speak authoritatively about that. But take away the legal issues. I mean, you are a government that was elected by people. You can't assume that you know it all. You can't assume, you can't uh, play, um, assume the toga of the benevolent father who knows what's best for his children at all points in time. You know, you, you've got to have a conversation with the people. We elected you, you know, and you are representing us. The minister works for me. That's the reality. Um, his salary comes from the taxes that I pay. So, you know, you shouldn't just slam things down our throats. I, I'm not even talking about whether I agree with that policy or not, right? I'm just saying the approach is wrong. Um, it's about time that our governments understand and demonstrate the understanding that the people do matter. We're not puppets. Um, um, we are a factor in the governance process, and you've got to take us into consideration as you do whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not happy with that at all. Just to make sense of the motivation behind this, let's retrace our steps mm -hmm. to the, the time of Ulushe Guobasanjo, when mm -hmm. he made the decision to abolish, dismantle all toll gates. Um, some of the reasons he gave us at that time was that the monies that was coming in from the toll gate, uh, over 60-something million, mm. doesn't really put much of a dent on the budget. He also talked about the fact that corruption has taken over the entire process. Mm. People were, you know, enriching themselves mm. and all of that. And then he went on to talk about the criminality that went, at those, that went on at those toll gates and the fact that it will increase traffic mm. on the highways. Absolutely. You know, so... Looking at that, that was his reason for taking it out. What has changed between 
the time that Obasanjo made that decision and now, in your opinion, to motivate and warrant this change? Technology. Um, I think that what's, what's behind the mind of the minister is that they will do it differently. Um, so if you, if you apply technology, you take care of um, pretty much all the concerns, perhaps except one. Um, the one where, because vehicles are slowing down, um, depending on the time of day, so if it's at night, for instance, then you become a bit more vulnerable to um, attacks from criminals and all that. But besides that, every other consideration can be, can be addressed with the use of technology. Um, so, for instance, he is saying that they would eliminate the use of cash entirely. Now, if that happens, if they're able to achieve that, and I don't know that they can, but if they do, then what that would mean is it would eliminate the, the corruption angle to this. Where well, how, how, in your opinion, can they yeah. actually make it... This is the roads that is being used mm -hmm. by all and sundry. Mm -hmm. It's not just cars that ply that, yeah. those roads. We have tricycles, we have Drugs. motorcycles, we have animals from our headsmen, <laughs> we have the poor, the rich, mm -hmm. those in between and all of that. Yeah. You know, how are you going to capture all of this in some sort of electronic do these people have access it's how possible. we has internet spread everywhere to allow for this it's possible um so what i what what i just i was thinking about it like how can they do this and i just thought to myself okay so you could for instance have um um what ticketing points at strategic sec sections along the highways all over the country where you can go in and buy a cart now, that card can be designed such that the toll uh, gate can read your card as you approach and open the barrier so you don't even have to stop. You don't need to interact with anyone. It's possible. Technology today means that regardless of your um, economic, um, your position in terms of economic um, stratification, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, whether you have access to the internet, whether you've got a mobile phone or whatever, you can just buy a card, and as you approach the gate, flash it, and the thing will open. Shabu, that technology is possible today. Of, it costs yeah. a lot of money to yeah. put these things together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Billions, running bil sure. into billions of sure. Naira. Sure. Aren't there other things that will you know, be of more benefit to the people than putting <laughs> up tokens at this time? I mean, look, the, the, I... I if one, I'm just thinking on behalf of the minister, what's the motivation behind this? And I know, as you know, right, that the mentality and the mindset of this government right now for its second term is it's trying to address a fiscal deficit. It's trying to address a revenue shortfall in the funding of the budget. Um, so they're thinking or so they think they are, actually. But well, the they, time they think, frame, will yeah, they be able well, to accomplish it within the four years that is left? It's, the, the four years is almost going. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's possible to achieve this. Uh, you know, I mean, look, for me, the possibility and achievability of all of this is not so much the issue as the propriety of it, whether this is actually the right thing to do. First of all, like um, the former president, uh, Obasanjo, had said, how much money will this generate relative to the amount of money that is required to maintain the roads? That's the first question. Second question, at what point do you want to introduce the tolls? Because if you introduce a toll gate today, as our roads are, then you know that's, that's a criminal injustice to the people. I can't be plying a road where my car is consistently battered and destroyed with each use, and you expect me to pay for that damage. Um, my, my body is subjected to a lot of wear and tear because the roads are just nonsensical. I waste a lot of time, and then I pay again. So if the idea is to use the concept of tolling to attract funding, maybe private sector funding, for instance, something similar to what they've done at with Lekki, you know, the Lekki Expressway. If that's the idea, then it's a different conversation. We can say, oh, okay, this is not a bad idea. How do you want to go about it? But you can't just come and say you, you, you will start tolling federal roads. There is no time frame. You've not told us how, when, um, under what structure or framework. It doesn't work. Now, you we'll know, so, come to the issue of continuity in a bit, but let's yeah. look at the implication of this on the common man, the man who um, subsists from, you want to do vegetable from 
um, or uh, Oshun to mm. Lagos or mm -hmm. from, you want to move interstate mm -hmm. like that. Um, what is the implication for the common man on the street? Can you break it down so we really understand what this is? Well, I mean, um, even if you don't own a car, you must drive in one to get from one point to the other. So like you say, if you're a farmer and you want to move your goods from Oshun State to Lagos to come sell, you know, then you've got to um, pay for space in a truck and bring it down. Um, the truck owner is going to pay at all. We don't even know how much yet, right? So if we're talking, say, because of the distance, the length of the road, for the toll rates to be meaningful, you probably be talking of something around 500 naira uh, per use, per toll gate, right? So if the cost, the, the, the cost to the, the transporter increases by, say, 3,000 to 4,000 naira per day, in addition to the fuel he's going to pay for already, in addition to the maintenance costs that he's bearing, he will definitely jack up his prices, costs, his transportation fares, right? So for the average Nigerian, whoever you are, it simply means you pay more to get from where you are now to where you want to be. And, and that, that, that for me is, is, is a problem. Uh, you know, we're already talking about VAT going up. Um, why? Uh, the government has got to be a bit more ingenious and creative with this quest for um, um, reducing the deficit. I think the mistake they're making is they keep equating reducing deficit to generating more revenue. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to. You can find other ways to fund the things that you want to do within your budget without necessarily increasing your revenue. So the issue of PPP comes very, very starkly. And I know that um, Minister Fashola, Mr. Fashola is a, is, a, is an advocate of private sector participation. Mm, some would call him a capitalist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you know, and I have no issues with that. I'm, I'm a bit of a capitalist myself, a social capitalist. I think capitalism has got to have a face, right? But capitalism is the way. So I don't have a problem with that, but you, you've got to make sure that you've balanced it and considered all the variables, especially as it impacts the poor. You have to protect the poor, like the president likes to say. They are the vulnerable in the society. You need to, every policy that you are implementing must have taken into consideration how it's going to affect them. If you've not done that, then you've not done well. So I'm not sure that all of that has been put into consideration. Do you in see that coming to play? Do you see, you, you, you seem to have a lot of respect for um, the minister, and uh, he seems to have, you know, done <laughs> certain things in his time. But yeah. do you see him factoring that in? A comprehensive plan that will cushion the effect of these toll gates I don't. Um, on the people? Um, so, um, one of the things that we understand about uh, the minister is he was governor of Lagos State. And in his first four years as governor, he did a lot of nice things. In his second four years, he was almost a dictator. He was, he was draconian in a lot of the policies that he came up with. Um, a lot of policies that damaged lives. I know quite a number of people who are still out of a job today because of some of the policies that were implemented at that time. right? And one of the problems that I always had at that time was why are you not thinking about the impact of these policies on the man on the street? Um, Mr. Fashola didn't seem to bother too much about that. For him, he just felt this thing needs to happen. This thing is good for Lagos as a city, and I'm going to do it. So now that he effect. is spearheading so now that this, he's in, this is not just Lagos State, yes, now this is the entire so Nigeria. Absolutely. What, what, you, you fear a repeat of this Absolutely. Scenario. I don't think it's going to change because, you know, I mean, once you're 30, 35, you're set. <laughs> That's who you are likely to be for the rest of your, your years on earth, right? So I don't, I'm not optimistic. I don't think that the impact of this policy on the average man on the street, the, 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 combination, the effect of the combination of this policy with the other policies of government, um, the impact that will have on the average man on the street, I don't think that is going to come into play in this decision. I think that he's just, just going to say to himself, this is the way to go, and he's going to do it. You know, so except if we say no, we can say no. How, how will we I do mean, Nigerians that? can say no, we're good at that. Um, <laughs> we're good at talking. Absolutely. We talk, when, and when, then when the yeah. decision, the sledgehammer comes, we all shift to one so, corner. Sometimes, all you do need to do is talk. 
sometimes all you you know so um, we we have to make it clear that this policy we don't like it and we'll state why well the reactions are already coming yeah, the people's absolutely. democratic party it, during absolutely. whose time it was removed yeah. they've come up to describe mm -hmm. it uh, what's the language that was used the pdp <laughs> says um amid uh, such plazas amid economic hardship and inflation mm. is ill-conceived and anti-people uh, they went on to say that such an idea amounts to executive bullying which cannot be justified um, on the any guys, and they insist that the decision must be rescinded. Do you see that happening? Um, it depends. I think it depends on us. It's possible because we've shown in the recent past, in the last six months, that we can influence government policy. Um, the famous example is Ruga, you know, where there was a lot of outcry, and the government. It was suspended. It wasn't. To, yeah, <laughs> I like to the word step up back, <laughs> <up head. laughs> Because we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, yes. right? But at least on the surface of it, they, they did step back. They did say, okay, we're suspending it. Um, now we understand the policy is still very much alive, but it's been implemented in a different way. And that's happened because Nigerians said no. So I think that we should say no to this. Now, I am not necessarily against the concept of tolling in itself because I think that it's not a bad way to go, given our financial, fiscal realities. It's just that it's got to be handled better. It's got to be handled having shown, having been seen to have taken into consideration the impact on the people, having demonstrated the numbers. Don't just throw the thing at us. Let's know how much. OK, so you want to tell Lagos Ibadan, you want to tell um, Ibadan to Ilori, you want to tell uh, Cardinal to Kano. How much will the tall be? Patrick, you know, we need to know those things. Uh, we'll come back to the reaction, but I just wanted to ask, is it possible uh, for the federal government, before they roll out this uh, toll gate uh, situation, to fix all the roads? Because Fashala <laughs> mentioned during that press briefing that he was going to, uh, the, the lanes are going to be 10 lanes, something along yeah. those lines. They are going yeah. to expand the mm -hmm. road, mm -hmm. and uh, some contracts have been awarded, but Will this go round the country, around all the axes that needs to be touched before its implementation? Is that possible? Um, it, that point you make um, is suggesting that perhaps this is a futuristic plan. And I, my, my suspicion is he's specifically thinking about Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Um, because as far as I know, that's the only 10 lane, potentially a 10 lane road that will have federal road that we'll have now. The other might be Badagri, Badagri to, um, Badagri to uh, Igomo, you know, the one that, is, that was started by him, right? So perhaps those two, those two roads. Beyond that, which other 10 lane road do you have? So maybe that statement is, is a peek into his mind and into the plans as to when this is going to be implemented. But and it cannot where. just be those um, locations because no. the points that it's, uh, I think, it, um, it's if I remember correctly, it's going to affect about 51, 51 highways yeah. and it's still going to be the 31 polling, yeah. I mean, uh, toll points. gate yeah. uh, points that yeah. we had before. Yeah. So yeah. if that is going to be the case, then it has to go around the country. Some of the federal roads we have today are motorable and I think probably in their mind, um, in good enough condition to be told. The road must be in good condition for you to tell it. If it's not in good condition, you can't tell it. If you do that, then the people will revolt, and people can revolt. Um, so so I, I think that perhaps the plan will be uh, to tell the ones that are tollable in good enough condition to be told, tell the ones that are just coming on stream, like Lagos Ibadan, which is supposed to um, be completed by 2022. So you start tolling it then. Um, you can't tell, I mean, you can't tell, for instance, Ilori, the Ibadan, to Ilori Expressway. You know, we'll, we'll park our cars on the road and block it. You can't tell that road because it's a dead trap today, right? So uh, maybe, maybe the plan is futuristic. And, you know, that's my discomfort, the fact that we're saying maybe. We shouldn't be saying maybe. If you are coming out to tell us that you have a it, policy... It, it, even if it is it, futuristic, you should, you even should. if it is futuristic, mm -hmm. like you're saying, um, they're trying to um, warm us, to yes, the, uh, warm us up the to the idea, and, yes. right? Yeah. So what questions should Nigerians be asking now ahead of the implementation? How will it work? So the question that you asked 
earlier, you know. So what's, what's the um, model? What's the turning model that will be applied? Is it going to be cash? Is it cards? Um, is it a hybrid? You know, that's one question. But I think the biggest question should be how much? <laughs> yeah, I certainly want to know that as How well. Much? I mean, yeah, because it is the ripple effect us. is the drivers yeah. will now put Absolutely. it on the fare, Absolutely. and then the trader will put it yeah. on the goods, yeah. and then before you know it, everything is everything out. Everything goes of. up, even so. if it's even if it's just two percent marginal inflation. You know, as a result of that, that's significant. So, uh -huh. so they need to tell us how much. Um, if the plan is very long term in outlook, and if the plan is a part of an overall plan to attract private sector funding to do our roads. It's not a bad idea. Sustainability as as, has always been our yeah. challenge. How mm. do we sustain it after? Because next, after in the next four years, who knows mm. if it is Fashola mm. that is going to be mm. the minister? Yeah. So sustainability, how do we <laughs> ensure that? So we don't spend all this money and then yeah. at the end of the day, it is still, the like you said, the taxpayer that will suffer. Yeah, so, so I've always talked about legislation. Um, um, some of your colleagues don't like it when I say that, but, but I always say that because we have demonstrated time and time again uh, not to behave the way normal societies do, some things that are not subjects of legislation in other parts of the world will probably need to legislate. Um, so sustainability. Let's have a law that you know, makes it illegal to dismantle policies that have gone through certain routes before they were implemented. If we don't do that, then yeah, who's to say that even the next, let's assume the next government is APC formed. Who's to say that the next president won't dismantle this again? You know, if we don't have something that prevents him from doing so. So, Nigerian people, absolutely. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Pleasure. All right, thank you for watching so far. But don't go anywhere yet. Uh, we'll go for a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the NLC and what they are doing to ensure the implementation of the new minimum wage. To stay with us. <laughs>